Today is our covenant service, and it's quite interesting because in a week, in the week, Gary informed me, which I was told a few years ago, that he believes this year is our 150th anniversary. And I've got a feeling because of COVID and everything, we forgot all about it. And so today, it's not only our covenant, but uh, I believe it's the start of our 150th year. And I'm sure we'll have some celebrations um, a little bit later on. Do you want to just check with Nori on the button quickly, which? Well, she was here. Yeah. Yes, that's what you're trying to say. And it's quite funny because the lady Nori's been looking out for has just walked past. <laughs> I'm just letting her know. Um, so there will be some celebrations this year, I am sure. But today is our covenant, and we're going to begin by singing number 347 Crown Him with Many Crests. Page 
It's our covenant service. If I read the words in light print, please would you respond with the words in book? Let us pray. Glory to the Father, the God of love, who created us, who continually preserves and sustains us, who has loved us with an everlasting love, and given us the light of the knowledge of his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> glory to Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who though he was rich, yet for our sake became poor, and was tested in every way as we are, yet without sin. Who proclaimed the good news of the kingdom, who was obedient to the point of death, and even death on the cross. Who was raised from the dead and is alive forever, and has opened the kingdom of heaven to all who trust in him. Who is seated at God's right hand in glory, and will come to be our judge. Blessed be God forever. Glory to the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, by whom we are born into the family of God and made members of the body of Christ, whose witness confirms us, whose wisdom teaches us, whose power enables us, who will do for us more than we can ask or think. Blessed be God forever. To the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory forever. Amen. Amen. God of grace, through the mediation of your Son, you call us into a new covenant. Help us, therefore, to draw near with faith and join ourselves in a perpetual covenant with you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing again from our books. Number 418, 418, we have a gospel to prepare.
Please be seated and we now have our reading. Today's reading is from the Book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through to 43, and is titled up, Peter at Cornelius' House. Then Peter began to speak. I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses, <coughs> we are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Amen. Thank you. It's an interesting passage because <clears throat> whether he's speaking or preaching, the message is the same really, because I wonder how many of you have sat in your seats on a Sunday morning in here, and the preacher has turned around and said, I'm going to bring you some spiritual milk. And in your head you're thinking, can you please make it condensed? <laughs> you see, we can say things in a thousand words that sometimes you could say in ten words. Do you know anyone like that? <laughs> maybe they say maybe and this passage is a bit like that because it's not telling you everything that was said at that meeting it was not telling you every word that was preached or spoken but it's the words that are important to us and in a way the whole of the Bible is full of that it's not every word that's spoken but it's the important things you need to know Many years ago, not 145 years ago, but quite a number of years ago, there was a course that came out called Person to Person. I don't know if anyone ever saw it. It was, it was quite a good course. And the bit that I always remember, there's two bits really. Um, the first bit was a funny part because this poor chap was really sweating and working in, in the loft. And I don't know if anyone's been working in the loft, but it's hot up there. All your heat goes up. You might as well put a television up there. Um, it's so hot. And this chap puts his head through the top of this hatch, and he says to the man, have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? And you could see this chap get a bit irate as if to say, you might be falling down that ladder in a minute. But, but the other bit that I remember was, they got the group to go into pairs, and one person would begin by actually saying, now, this is where I am with God. This is where I am with God. You've got five minutes to talk about it. So that this is what happened, they talked for five minutes, and the other person had to listen. And then, once they finished the five minutes, they asked the other person, now, in two minutes, Tell the other person what they just told you. And what happens then is the important parts get told to the other person. 
in half the time. And in many ways, that's quite valuable to us because it, especially in my job, if I go around with a dog closet, there's always someone who's going to ask a question, usually on a bus. Now, I'm getting, no one getting me bus parts, it might happen a bit more. <laughs> That's if I can get on one because my congregation comes on a bus and there's no room. But if you've only got a couple of minutes to speak to someone, you haven't got a 10 minute story to tell them. And this passage, I believe, is very much like that. He's telling them, I expect in many words, but what is now written down is the bits we need to know. The main points. I've got to say, even as a preacher, even as um, worship leaders, I expect there are times when you do what we call, we've got to pad out the service a bit. <laughs> Sorry, Julie, if that's made you laugh. Um, you never do this, Julie, do you? But you're what you do. You look at a service and you say, look, this service is only going to take half an hour, and you could say, well, does that matter? Or else you could say, now, how can I pack this out to make it last a bit longer? And I suspect we've all done it in certain ways. But this passage is telling us what we need to know. And so what is the passage telling us? It starts by saying, then Peter began to speak. I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism. Does not show favouritism. Up until then, they believed that um, the kingdom of God was for the Jewish people. And the Gentiles were lost. That was how it was. But now Peter's come and he's telling him, actually, there's no difference. There's no difference between Jew and Gentile. The gospel is for everyone. It don't matter what colour, what race, how old you are, how young you are. It don't matter. God loves us all equally and Jesus died for us equally. And that's the first bit. And he don't elaborate on it. It speaks for itself. There is no favouritism in the kingdom of God. So that's the first part. But then he goes on to talk about Jesus' baptism. And Jesus' baptism is quite interesting for those who want a bit of background work to do. And that is, <clears throat> from what I can make out, Jesus was the first Jew ever to be baptised. Because they didn't have to be baptised. So if you want a bit of research, look up why Jesus was baptised. And we believe it's to relate to other people. But also, it was the start, the significant start of his ministry. The Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove and God anointed him at that baptism to go out into the wilderness, be, te be tested by the devil and to carry out his ministry. It's all in there, but in a few words. And then it goes on to talk about Jesus and his death. The death and resurrection. How can you have a gospel without the death and the resurrection of Jesus? <coughs> We're talking about sin of the people. And the only person who could take that sin away is someone who was sinless who could take that sin upon himself. And that's what Jesus did. It's in there. I wonder how many of us are doubting Thomases. If I said to you that, who should I pick on today? <laughs> Kathy Barter. <laughs> if I told you that Kathy Barter had um, put in for the Olympics and she's going to do the marathon. I wonder what you'd say. <laughs> the knitting, yes. There's more chance of bombs out doing it, but that's all right. Um, you'd say, show me. Show me. I want proof. 
if you do a sponsored walk or anything like that, a lot of people will say, show me you've done it. I don't, I just pay the money and that's it. But a lot of people will say, I want evidence. And that's why in this passage it then talks about witnesses. There's been witnesses to Jesus' resurrection as proof that he rose from the dead. He was seen eating and everything with them. And that is the good news of the gospel. That is the gospel in just a few lines, condensed. I still believe that if society followed what the gospel and the word of God tells us, I think society would be a far better place. But the problem we have now is the church is following society. And sometimes we've got to stand up for what the Bible tells us. Um, as you, uh, nearly all of you know, I was brought up in East Coast. I was born in East Coast. And I think we were taught the morals of the scriptures, even if your parents didn't believe the scriptures. You were brought up by the morals of the scriptures. Is that the same today? I don't know. And I think the church needs to again go out there and share the good news. The good news of Jesus Christ, but also how God wants us to live in community with each other. I believe it's all there. I just want to round off. The passage, you have so many sermons on it. But I want to finish with three brief sayings. The first is that Jesus is Lord of all. God is Lord of all. There's no favourites. God is judgeable. But God and Jesus is Saviour of all who put their trust in him. Just a simple passage but it's all there. I'd imagine, as with other times that Peter's preached, we could probably have two or three pages of it. But a lot of it's been taken out, so the main points are there. And sometimes that's what we want to see. If I get um, minutes of meetings, I get some minutes of meetings where it's about five pages long. And then I'll get another meeting. It's all been condensed into one sheet. And which one would you prefer? The condensed version. We're going to continue with our theme of covenant. And covenant and the gospel fits together. Because you can't have one without the other. If you'd like to turn to page 285. 285. The covenant we're going to share in is a covenant between us and God. God has made his promises with us, but we need to make our promises to God. But also the promises to each other, because it's three ways. It's God, it's us. And it's also the folk around us. Page 285. God made a covenant with the people of Israel, calling them to be a holy nation, chosen to bear witness to steadfast love by finding delight in the Lord. The covenant was renewed in Jesus Christ our Lord, in his life, work, death and resurrection. In him all people may be set free from sin and its power, and united in love and obedience. In this covenant, God promised us new life in Christ. For our part, we promise to live no longer for ourselves, but for God. We meet, therefore, as generations have met before us, to renew the covenant 
which bound them and binds us to God. Let us then seek forgiveness for the sin by which we have denied God's claim upon us. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear us as we confess our sins. For the sin that has made us slow to learn from Christ, reluctant to follow him, and afraid to bear the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has caused the poverty of our worship, the formality and selfishness of our prayers, our neglect of fellowship and the need of grace, and our hesitating witness for Christ. For the sin that has led us to misuse your gifts, evade our responsibilities, and fail to be good stewards of your creation, Lord, have mercy. For the sin that has made us unwilling to overcome evil with good, tolerant of injustice, quick to condemn, and selfish in sharing your love with others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. We say together, have mercy on me, O God, in your constant love, in the fullness of your mercy. God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, to all who truly repent, this is his gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Section 14 in our book is actually our next hymn, so you don't need to look it up in your hymn book unless you need the music. Come, let us use the grace divine and all with one accord. Please stand. Others are contrary to both. 
In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others, we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ who strengthens us. Therefore, let us make this covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace. Lord God, Holy Father, since you have called us through Christ to share in this gracious covenant, we take upon ourselves with joy the yoke of obedience and for love of you, engage ourselves to seek and do your perfect work. We are no longer our own but you. I am no longer my own but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you. Or lay aside for you. Exhausted for you. Or brought low for you. Let me be poor. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely Lord our God, you have helped us by your grace to make these prayers, and you have promised through Christ our Lord that when two or three agree in his name, you will grant what they ask. Answer now your servants' prayers according to their needs. In this world grant that we may truly know you, and in the world to come, graciously give us eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The Lord has made an everlasting covenant of peace with his people. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We see our communion here, number 592. Let us break bread together with the Lord.
page 290. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God our Father, fountain of goodness, creator of all that is, you have made us in your own image. You have given us life and reason and love for one another, setting in our hearts a hunger for you. In darkness you are our light, in adversity and temptation our strength. You bear patiently with our folly and sin, granting us your law to guide us and your prophets to renew our faith. In the fullness of time you came to us in love and mercy, in Jesus Christ your living word, full of grace and truth. He lived among us, declaring your forgiveness and revealing your wisdom in works of mercy and in his word of power. For us he suffered and died upon the cross, by death destroying death. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your people, gathered together in every time and place to glorify your holy name. With them and all the company of heaven, we join in the unending hymn of praise. Holy God, pour out your Spirit, that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, Lord, we obey his command with this bread and this cup, by which we recall his death and resurrection, the source of our life and salvation. Grant that we who share in this holy sacrament may be united by your Spirit and grow into perfect love. Bring us with those who have done your will in every age into the light of your presence and the joy of your kingdom. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you in songs and everlasting Christ. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught his disciples, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread.
We talked about the gospel, we talked about our covenant, but we also talk about our hope that we have in our Lord and our God. And the symbol of hope is an anchor. And so the good old boys were going here, 645, our clothing hymn, will your anchor hold in the storms of life?